Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear. I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back for another My Writing Excuses homework episode. This is for the episode in season 17, episode 20. So the book of the week for this one is Valentina Salazar is Not a Monster Hunter by Zoraida Cordova. Good evening. I am here because I finally got a hold of Valentina Salazar is Not a Monster Hunter by Zoraida C Cordova. And this is part, or this was the book of the week for writing excuses. And so I'm going to read it. From what I understand, this is like a middle grade. It's about a young woman who her parents used to be uh, monster hunters and then something went wrong and mom decided to retire. They're put in a situation where they have to go do a monster hunt even though that's not what they're trying to do and it's supposed to be an ensemble with the family and I'm very excited to read it and it's you know a new release as well it came out at the end of June. Here we go. Hey everyone I'm just checking in it's been a while since I've talked about Valentina Salazar is not a monster hunter and just I am just about to start chapter six I'm having a little bit of a rough go on this and I think it's just because I'm not in a middle grade mood and I'm not really the audience for this book. There's many elements that I'm liking. Like I'm really enjoying Valentina and I am getting angry on her behalf as she is saying that, hey, you guys aren't listening to me. You aren't the I want to spend time with my family and then when something happens in some extended family like oh well you said you wanted to spend time with my family she goes no that was not the family I talked to I talked to you about I was very clear on what family I wanted to spend time with very much getting angry on her behalf we'll continue reading this it's just going much slower than I had anticipated so I just did a wrap-up of this book the other day saying how hard it was for me to get in and I was ready to start chapter six, but I was kind of like iffy. So I put it mentally on my radar to just read one chapter a day, at least that way I could get through the book. And I finished it last night. You know, chapter six really started. I think maybe it was just the setup to get them on the road. Felt like it was taking forever. But once they were on the road, I loved it. So we're going to talk about this some more. This book is a new release book because it came out in June 2022. I think this video is probably going to pull some double duty as anybody who's just interested in the book and then no, those who are watching my writing excuses homework. But Valentina Salazar, you know, was following a young woman of 11 and a half who up until about eight months ago grew up on the road with her family finding for the lack of a better word, monsters who had creeped into their world, but really believed, or but really should be in a world called Phoenix Terra, which is like the end world is what I think that translates to. And their goal was to get these monsters and to send them back to the world that they belonged. And eight months ago, something happened and Dad is gone. Dad died. A job went wrong and all they found was an ear and no other body and everyone is dealing with grief in the family and they're all dealing with it in different ways. Instead of coming together, because as they were as a team before, they don't want to share their pain with one another, which leaves Valentina Salazar going, you know what? You all have changed. You all have broken our family up. She makes some great points. In fact, I was pissed for her at the very beginning of this book, especially as she kept asking her older sister Lola and her older brother Rome, hey, I want to spend time with you. Hey, let's go do these things. And I never agreed to stop being a monster protector, even if the rest of you did. To which Lola and Rome point out that, yes, they know what she's been doing and all of her looking for missions and they keep telling her to stop. They make her feel bad for keeping secrets from them. And 
it works for a little while, but at the same time, Val is her own person and she's blunt. You know, middle grade. I am going to just tell you what I think to the point where her uncle Raph comes randomly over and she's rude to him because she's like, you are a traitor. You are one of the people who was mean to my dad. It's in his journals and I don't like you. And her uncle has already taken her oldest sister, Andy, to join the Hunter Society. It was a big break in the family. And now he's trying to get her brother, Rome. During all of this emotional turmoil, she finds a video of a young boy who finds what he thinks is a dragon egg. And she's like, oh shit, that's not a dragon egg. That's an Oropuma, which was the monster from the job of when her dad disappeared. And he's trying to do a live stream of it. And she's like, no, no, that, that needs to go back. That's going to be really dangerous if it hatches. And so she decides to run away with the Scourge, the family van that they lived in growing up, which has some really cool tech options. So she, even though she's 11 and a half, she can drive it. And her sister Lola and her brother Rome go, you know what? Fine. One last, one last job because we need closure. And Val's like, mm, I don't really want closure, but okay. If it gets us on the road, sure. And then they start going through a journey. Even though this is a single perspective, it's all from Val's, the ensemble is everyone around her. And it's done really well. So you have Lola and Rome who's with her basically throughout all of it. But then you have other members of the ensemble who come on and off as needed. And you see how connections that Val has made during these past eight months with an online chat group pays off to help them along the way. She has made friends in her own way, not in the way everyone else was telling her to. And she got to be true to herself as she did so. So I would say these book's central themes are grief and connection. Connection because you can build the family that you want at the same time of wanting the family you have. For example, Andy crops up a couple times and Val's pissed at her, but Lola keeps showing her love because Lola and Andy are closer in age and Lola wants her sister back, whereas Val is pissed that Andy left. And so it's a good balance in the dynamics, especially when Andy's more mentally prepared to argue with someone who was mad at her and Lola keeps throwing her off because Lola's like, I love you, you're my sister. No matter what you do, I'm going to love you. Come home. And then with the found family that Val has created her internet friends and they know and understand what else is going on in the world. And you get fully fleshed out internet friends. They're not just there to help the plot happen. No, oh hey, my friend Eggy is gonna help us with um, finding the location of where this live stream is going, but he needs some help as well. And then it, that's kind of how it goes as they're going through. It's not just like, oh, hey, you're here. Here's the help you need. Bye. No, uh, this has great side characters that are rounded out. And I really enjoy this. I haven't put it through Copile yet. If you have a middle grade reader or you like re reading middle grade, I do suggest this book. And the homework for this episode is look at your pro protagonist Free write is seen in which they're applying for the job of being the protagonist in your story. Something that really struck me from this episode was they're talking about ensemble and the fact that if your book is multi-POV, that doesn't necessarily mean it's an ensemble. An ensemble is a group of people who work together to accomplish something. For an example, the Lord of the Rings, the first book where they're all together, that is an ensemble. But the Song of Ice and Fire, where there's so many multiple characters, that would not be considered an ensemble cast because they're not always directly working with one another. It was just something that kind of went off in the light bulb. And I have two stories that I myself am working on that have an ensemble cast. The first one that came to mind was Fiala. I named my stories by my main character. And the second one is Widow, W-I-T-O. I went with Fiala because Fiala came first. This was a story that I came up with when I was 16. Enjoy! This weekend is the Worldwide Write-a-thon and I figured sprinting would be a perfect time to work on my writing excuses homework for my different videos. So that is kind of what I'm doing for this sprint.
There's always a relief that shoots through me when I put my key in the door at the end of the workday. I'm done. My time is my own, and I don't have to do anything I don't want to. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate my job. It's just sometimes mindlessly boring. My key turned in the door, and I entered my apartment. In the midst of taking off my shoes, I realized that a young woman in her 20s was sitting cross-legged on my living room floor, facing the door. She was frowning down at one of the fantasy books I had left on the coffee table earlier that day. Her clothes were what Americans often think of as medieval fantasy, and she had a travel pack next to her. She looked up as the door closed behind me. Hi, Rachel. It's been a while. Fiala? She smiled at the recognition. Um, how is it you are here? In your world? Not sure. Um, okay. I said, stalling while my brain spun. I glanced down the hall to see if my husband was awake. It looked dark, which meant he was either asleep or had his office door closed. He said I could wait. Office door was probably closed. So what are you here for? I asked. Biela's head dipped and eyes narrowed in a sure sign of, are you kidding me? Again, it's been a long time. Uh, about that. It's not that I don't like your story. I mean, we've been together for years now. It's just there have been some others that are easier to write. I sank into the love seat across from her. You aren't 16 anymore. You have the skills to write this. Well, thank you. I think we are more interesting characters now that we've aged appropriately. Definitely moved from YA to adult, I agreed. And as such, you should finish our story. Again, I have nothing against your story, but I did start it with a certain goal in mind, that the main character have the key answers, and I do. Yes, but you see, to a lot of readers, that is boring. It wouldn't be the same story shown through someone else's eyes. I know. And having a character who knows the answers doesn't mean that they have no growth, or that interesting things can't happen. And technically, I'm a linchpin. Without me as I am, the ensemble doesn't work. I do really like your interactions with everyone else, but I'm sure I could get them if we tweak your knowledge level a little bit. Another stare that made my inside squirm. Now I know how Sophia feels. Just because I know the history in the castle doesn't mean I know how it will all pan out. It could end in disaster. We're all pretty alpha in our own ways. Sophia would probably be the first to turn on me. Not when her romantic interest is your cousin. No, you're right. Everyone is entangled with you to some degree. So, you'll keep me? Definitely. Because in the end, it is your story, even if they all help. She grinned. Good. I smile attentively back. So will we be seeing you soon? Maybe... I'm not promising anything, but you definitely have the job.